after the canvas is dry, completely dry, we will do the third stage, is basically start to introducing the colors. Now, introducing the colors with uh, limit palette. One yellow, one red, and one blue, plus white. When I think about colors in my painting, I always think about something that does have to have a sense of harmony. It's going to reflect the way we see it. So basically how we do this. So it's just a, a yellow, ultramarine blue, and a lizard crimson. Okay. When uh, we mix these three colors together, or to each other, for example, yellow and blue, automatically we'll create a green. A green that is not towards yellow, is not too blue, <coughs> something between. So after I mix this blue right there, with a little bit of oil, this little messy mixer that I'm doing here is covering from the yellow to the blue. It has the potential to cover all this range. And now that I have this range from yellow to blue, I'm just going to... It's really transparent. The reason why I'm doing this really thin is because thanks to the previous underpainting, we will never lose what we had before. So it's something that slowly has its own evolution. So I'm just covering this area a little bit green. As you can see, I'm not, I'm not worried to being literal to all. I'm just covering this area with green because I see all this area seems to have all this green. Really transparent. So as you can see, it's really thin. And you see it makes a little bit more deeper. Right there. Okay. We see this little behind the bridge is not green, it's more like a blue. So let's try to take advantage how much we can cover with blue, yellow equal green or just blue or just yellow everything without using the white if you start to use white too soon it create an impediment so the, as you can see no white yet it's beautiful to use it but calibrate it in the right place after we prepare these thin uh, layers of uh, transparent colors transparent colors without using white so that's the beauty of the oil, the, and it's just enough to be transparent, no more, no less. Okay? I never like to clean my brush as much. I might just <laughs> wipe it off like that. The reason is this. Because all these colors, no matter how we're going to mix them, more yellow, more red, more blue, this, the intention is that all these colors are going to be married together arrange it together, the colors they fit exactly in the same window. If I start to separate colors and painting only the yellow with clean brush, only the green with a clean brush, huh? all these colors have, they have a tendency to separate each other. Instead, I want to engage the color wheel and creating the dominate lights by mixing all three colors together with a tendency, for example, that this area will have more yellow. Now I can start to mix, for example, orange. Same thing, so if I mix now yellow and red, I should cover and create a different range of orange. And I just want to cover a little bit this area. It's transparent, so we can still see through a little bit. Now more pigmentation we put in slowly it covers slowly the underpaint. So the underpaint is just a transition to keep having for us a guide to follow with and at the same time to start to embellish what we have been creating so far. When you start to feel a little bit more skillful with the using of the pigment, you can 
literally start to cover in the canvas as you see it but I will suggest if it's the first time we're using this technique to keep the colors thin oily I suggest that because it's much much easier to start to see the transform of the canvas okay knowing that I haven't used white that's the beauty of it I'm just using pure colors that's why I'm not try to paint it literally as it is yet not yet it's just pure colors so then when we go back with the same colors with a little more white then the painting starts to have a, a more nicer characteristic okay so they give us the chance really to not stressing the idea to to losing the likeness of the painting but instead it gives a little more pace to start to search the colors in a much more relaxed way without the struggle of matching colors okay so it's not about to matching the colors here it's just to interpret the colors without using white okay maybe here also the fact that it's thin because everything will uh, be show you it is not accidental it's really the way to make it easier in the process of mixing colors but the reason why I suggest to make it thin oily is because you can always go back in this stage and updating more likeness updating with more people and as you can see so far I haven't used much colors it's just small little quantity huh? See, because it's transparent, you can really go, even if you go over everything, it doesn't change nothing. Because there's nothing there, you see, it's just enough to start to map in the colors. It's really, really thin. Okay. After we cover this with the pure colors, Finally, I can start to introduce a little bit white. So we will start to tune down the brightness of the blue with a little white and start to create in a light blue. I pick a little bit of blue, mix with a little bit white. So I'm just kind of touch it up a little bit here and there just to to give a sense of uh, millions of little foliage so instead to paint in each one which it will take us maybe three <laughs> years <laughs> so we just create the impression of the of the uh, leaves by simply molding using the brush to molding and pushing the colors making things a little bit darker see I'm kind of recreating a little bit the foliage on those three I think this is the point where I would tend to begin to be muddy yes that's why this technique you avoid that that's interesting what you say because if we are, we would start just mixing the colors and interpret this as we see it beautiful but it depends how much skill we have in the process of mixing colors so that's why the, from the beginning of this lesson specifically is purpose to show you how to avoid that and uh, start to have in a painting that is not anymore under painting a painting they start to have an introduction of color from this stage now that I'm introducing more white in my colors you're going to see the painting start to have a little more nicer depth. character a little more depth a little more character mm -hmm. so let me put these few brush strokes there there now when I do this because the canvas was in the beginning really thin if you notice I'm not anymore 
doing scratch in the canvas. It's really, you see the sound? Mm -hmm. It's really not pushing. So now that I'm going to the opaque, I'm painting soft, light, because they will lean on top of these previous layers it will also visually represent, as we do it with the sound, we do it visually. So visually it will represent a little bit more nicer way to look the paint. So that's why it is more delicate. to do all the refined touch uh, when this uh, will dry because if you notice so far at this stage of the canvas it's not finished it really looks unfinished mm -hmm. to, to really not worry too soon to creating too much detail because you will see when this will be dry next week how really easy is to just retouch in here and there so the interesting part is from the underpainting now the canvas it does have a uh, Colors. Okay, I think we'll be good enough. So I hope you enjoy this. So next time. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.